now, please welcome to the stage, Dominique Del Valle. People often ask me, are you a boy or a girl? And when I say neither, I'm faced with confusion because from the start we're offered two choices, two paths, so to speak, and those are boy and girl. And these narrow choices become more complex with age. The older I got, the, re the more I realized that I don't really identify as either gender. I came out to my parents when I was three. Well, I mean, they said that I didn't really come out of the closet so much as I kind of came out of the womb wearing steel toe boots and knocked that door down. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I didn't really understand what that meant. I didn't understand that hiding in the closet meant hiding who you are. See, the fact that we are in hiding or that we even have to come out shows how far we have left to go. The fact that depression runs rampant in the LGBT plus community shows how far we have left to go. The fact that the suicide rate for the people in my community is higher than that of my straight peers shows how truly urgent this really is. Just think about the average high school experience for LGBT plus youth. See, in my freshman class, I was taught about the different contraceptives and the different ways of protecting myself from sexually transmitted infections, if I were with a male. They taught me how to avoid pregnancy if it came to that and the options I would have. But at this point in my life, I wasn't really so much worried about that as I was worried about the pros and cons of chest binding and hormone therapy and how to help if someone I know has been kicked out for being gay. Moreover, all the healthy relationships I learned about were between a guy and a girl, so you can see the disconnect. Immediately, I was labeled as abnormal. I was an outsider, and it hurt. To have my identity invalidated, to be, lab to be left questioning if I could claim this part of me, seeing as I didn't really know this part of me. One day, I was scrolling through Tumblr, and I saw this post that listed like different genders and sexualities that most people don't really know about, and I found one that I identify as known as gender fluid, or someone who can move between the spectrum of gender. I learned more about myself through that one post than I had ever learned in like, my entire sex ed class. It was eye-opening just knowing that there are people who can identify with me and be successful. It helped me not to feel so isolated in my own body. This showed me that there is something that we can do to change the lives of thousands of LGBT plus youth, and that is to have an inclusive sex ed in school so that we can get the proper sexual ed education that our straight peers receive. See, most schools teach abstinence only or semi-comprehensive sex ed. In fact, in only nine states do they require lesbian, gay, and bisexual inclusive sex ed. Whereas in three states, it is illegal to teach about alternative sexual identities. So if it's illegal to teach about me, then what does that make me? Now, think about this. In Illinois, sex ed is mandatory in grades K through 12. Imagine the effect inclusive sex ed classes starting in kindergarten can have in combating bias and prejudice. No longer will we have to be seen as spectacles, but rather as equals. If we want a more inclusive society, we must have a more inclusive in education. We need sex ed that includes sex, sexuality, and gender. I call for a national reform on how we teach sex ed. That way, that will educate our youth. But what about you? I ask that you seek knowledge about the spectrum of gender and sexuality and teach others too. See, the most powerful weapon we have against hatred and bias is knowledge. So I ask you, please arm yourselves. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage Juan Sandoval. My mom is a fighter. When she was 19 years old, she left the only home she knew in order to give us a chance to dream in a country that's built on the fabric of dreams, the United States. A sad reality has gripped us now that the, um, that the fluffy clouds of the American dream 
are not real, and under those clouds lies a turbulent and racially unjust storm. The simple truth is, I'm scared. Me and my sisters need my mom because she's all that we have. And I'm really proud of my mom for the person that she is. <laughs> and the person that she's made me. And the thoughts of my mother being deported and torn away from my sisters is paralyzing. But her fears aren't unique. They're shared by millions of other immigrants just like her. In the last year alone, ICE has deported 96,000 non-criminal immigrants. That's 96,000 families and 96,000 hearts broken. But why do they tear families apart? We work and we fight for what all other Americans have fought for before. And that's the chance to be the greatest possible person that we can be. I hope that my children will not live in this all-consuming fear. They'll live in America that's swept clean of all this hatred and indifference that exists right now as I'm talking to you in this room. I ask, no. I implore you to fight for families. Join Families for Freedom while they campaign for the Child Citizens Protection Act that will give voice to children whose parents are in risk of being deported. It'll allow judges to take into consideration what effects a deportation could have on a child. Like where would they be, who would take care of them, and what kind of mental and emotional effects they would have on them. Advocate to your representatives. Push and press them to make changes and to change laws that encourage and support deportations. Be a bold new voice to a new America where we do not believe in tearing apart the foundations of family because families is what makes America. And just because they aren't American in paper doesn't mean they're not American at all because they're American in the heart and they are the fabric of the American dream. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage, Jaron Jackson. I have been a witness to many lives being ruined due to following the wrong people. My friend Jermaine and I, I remember when we used to play at the playground a lot. We used to play basketball for a couple of hours. We grew up in the same neighborhood as children, but somewhere along the line, Jermaine fell into the wrong crowd. In the past, Jermaine, who started off in the correct path by aspiring to the top of his classes and tried everything in his power to be better than his parents that never achieved going to college. But Jermaine, with every ounce in his little heart, wanted to fit in with all the rest of the kids by selling drugs. Lord Jermaine followed the wrong people to a robbery. Boom, blah, ended up getting shot as a result. He died as a lost kid because he didn't have the right role models to guide him down the correct path. We need to fix this issue and find people who can positively influence the next generation great minds. Jermaine could have been the next lawyer, congressman, doctor, or even the president of the United States. I was lucky to have role models. My youth minister, Jimmy, who is an excellent excellent example of positive leadership. For example, this kid in my youth group named Sonny straight away and Jimmy found him. He encouraged him and he showed him that the path that he was going down will ultimately destroy his life. He convinced him. He convinced Sonny to come back to our youth group. Minister Jimmy also makes sure to bring in various speakers to our group to share their experiences that mirrored the life of Sonny, but who overcame the struggles and were doing positive things now. What could we do to help positively influence the next generation? We should create videos in schools 
and activities that help hone on the skills of future leaders so that the next generation can have better role models. Group activities teaches us as students to work together, to learn from everyone's strengths, and to encourage each other to be great. Dr. Martin Luther King claimed, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. So today, I don't want to be silent. There should be no more Jermaine's. Could you be the next leader in your group? You, you could be the small factor that alters people's lives and keeps them from going down the wrong path. Thank you.